Hello, I'm Bash Bunny. I'm a programmer and I really love open source software. I mainly write Go right now, but you know, she's always curious, she's always exploring. Today, let's talk about leaving a repo better than you found it. This is something I do all the time, especially with open source work because you get a lot of different contributors and contributions coming in all the time. And especially since reading more about Martin Fowler's takes on pull requests and contribution workflows, I've tried to continuously improve the code that is already on main, you know, instead of trying to do all of it in pull requests, which is still a very pull request heavy workflows that I'm part of. But every time that I look at something, I do try and improve it. Like if I'm reviewing a pull request and I notice that there's, I might notice that there's some more things that we can improve in the scope of what we're touching in that pull request. So let's talk about it. If I've been working on a feature branch or a bug fix, my own little branch, okay? My own little bunny, bunny world off to the side. There are some questions that I ask myself along the way. Was there absolutely anything that was unclear or difficult to understand about this part in the code base? If so, how can that be improved? Can there be better naming? Do we need more comments? Is there a documentation that needs to be updated? Like code comments should be pretty descriptive. I'm writing Go, so it's Go doc. And sometimes you might want to include some runnable examples. Maybe it was really hard to understand how you would use that thing in practice, or maybe there was a part of the actual implementation that was a bit confusing. Like how can we generally improve this to make it more readable so that next time if someone's skimming over it, they can actually just, they don't have to stop at anywhere. And it's immediately obvious what the function is and what it does. And if they do need to dive into it, how it does that. Speaking of examples, a question I ask myself a lot is, is there an example of the code that I touched? How are we gonna keep this example up to date? In Go, this might mean having runnable examples, having unit tests. I find tests are really great documentation and great for users to figure out how they can use certain functions. But in Go, you might as well leverage GoDoc has runnable examples. And what's nice about those examples too, is if you do make changes to the API, those examples will fail. And it shows both in the documentation when you open up GoDoc and it actually is a testable example. So your tests will fail if that example doesn't work anymore, but then users can also also reference it from your documentation. So I really like the runnable examples that you can do in Golang. Another thing I often ask myself when I'm reviewing a PR or in my own changes is do we have the same functionality anywhere else? Usually organizations will have consistent code styles. I try to keep that consistent when I make any changes or when I'm reviewing pull requests is something that I'm thinking about. If we do have that implemented somewhere else, why is the implementation different? If it is, that might mean that we might update that other project to have a, the new and improved implementation. What is that thing named? Is the naming consistent? It's good to think about these things. It's good to question design decisions. It's good to make sure that everything is working smoothly. I mean, it's an opportunity to improve your code. That's not to say that you need to nitpick every single implementation that is introduced, but if you already have a frame of reference, you've already had it done somewhere else in the organization, then you might as well take a minute to just compare and figure out why you might wanna do one solution or the other. If there is a style guide for your organization, that is also something to consider and make sure that any changes that you're making adhere to that style guide. I'd say that's the biggest thing. If I'm touching anything, I've got like a new bug that I've discovered and I'm doing a bug fix, I will almost always add a new test that includes the failing result from before the fix. Improving test coverage along the way. If there's a new feature as well, actually, I will always add tests so that we have all of the edge cases for that new feature. If we wanna change things in the future, it's really easy to do and you don't have to worry about actually breaking anything crazy. Let me know if this was helpful. I feel like I'm just kind of sharing random things that I'm learning along my journey. <laughs> I think it's resonating with people. You guys are always very positive about it in the comments. So yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know if it's helpful, if I'm sharing these things. It seems like obvious in hindsight, like now that I know it, I'm like, of course, that's what you do. But I do feel like tech and programming is such a creative endeavor that there's a lot of gray area. So sometimes it's fun to have like nice concrete steps that you can follow when you're looking to have new contributions to your project. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Bye.